Hi, this is Felix. This is a tutorial for Confucius, a hardware design space exploration tool. The architecture of DX Rater includes three things. They are flow strategy, tower strategy, and hardware resources. Hardware resources include PE, buffer inside each PE, and global buffer and lock bandwidth. And the buffer inside each PE is related to the tile strategy that we use. So for this work, we assume that the data flow part is fixed, and we explore the hardware resources part and tiling strategy. So given a DNA model, for example, mobile net, you could have multiple platforms you want to deploy. So for each platform, you will have different budget and you could have different deployment scenario, like sequentially executing your layer or do it in a pipeline way. And for different combination of those, you have different hardware resource budget, like power and area, and you will have different objective, like latency or energy. So our goal here is to find the per layer P and buffer assignment so that we meet the hardware resource budget and optimize our objective. But what is the impact of hardware resource on performance and energy? Here you are looking at some layer of Mobile Night V2 and we give them the same mapping strategy, which is NVDLA, and we give them different P and buffer assignment and we plot their latency, energy, and area performance. You can see that different layers react to the P and buffer assignment very differently. So to find the optimal P buffer assignment for each layer becomes crucial. Now let's look at how we cast the hardware resource assignment into RL problem. In an RL algorithm, you will have step. So in each step, an agent will assign the P buffer to a layer. An environment will track the remaining power area budget. And in each episode, you will run multiple steps until the environment terminates. Environment terminates when entire DN is run or if environment runs out of area of power. And an episode is a series of decisions for each layer in a model. So we will run multiple episodes until the algorithm converge. Now let's look at how general reinforcement learning work. You have an agent and environment. Agent will make some action and get the reward from the environment and make observation and do another action and get the reward and make the observation again. Until the environment terminates, the agent will update its policy. And to cast the problem into hardware resource assignment, our agent becomes a hardware resource scheduler and our environment becomes an accelerator cost evaluation environment. So here's some detail. Our objective could be latency or energy and constraint will be the total chip area or power. Inside the agent, we use RN as an underlying policy network and we use a reinforced base method. An action will be number of P and buffer. In environment, we embed the master inside, which is an analytical model for DNA accelerator. And the reward is the objective value that we are interested in, like that is your energy. And sometimes you will get large penalty if the constraint is violated. For the observation, it includes the current DN layer we are looking at, the last action we made, and the current status we are at like the number of steps we are at and the episode is done or not. So now let's look at action space. The action space will be the number of P and number of buffer that you want to assign. So just take a simple example of 52 way of mobile net V2. If you don't consume action space in a certain way, then you will end up with extreme large action space that may not work. So our approach is a two-stage optimization. At the first stage, we use reinforcement learning and use a close grain action space. So we limit the number of P and buffer to 12 different values. P size is chosen empirically as shown in the table. And buffer size increases by the unit of tile size. It means that when data flow is defined, there will be some unit number of buffer size. For example, if we have this kind of tiling strategy, generating one output at a time, then we'll need nine weight and nine activation. Then the buffer size will be 19. And another example will be three output, then you will need 39 buffers. After the first stage coast grand global search, we will hand it over to the second stage using genetic algorithm to do some local fine tuning. It will fine tune the first stage solution locally. So here's our overview of our algorithm Confucius. So the first stage is RL algorithm, it's a coast grain global search. The second stage is a GA based algorithm, it's a local fine tuning. And the detail will be in the next two slides. Here's a walkthrough example of RL based search. You'll make observation and make action of P and buffer, get the reward, 
and make next observation for the current layer you are looking at and the previous action you made. And then make next action, get the next reward, and so on. And sometimes you will get negative reward because the constraint is violated. And when the environment is terminated, you will calculate the accumulated reward and update your agent, and you will go to the next episode. So the same process goes on. And we plot the accumulated reward here, and you can see that the accumulated reward goes up across episode. And at some point, they will converge, and our algorithm will terminate it. Now let's look at local fine tuning. Here we first look at the actions space of local fine tuning. It is defined by the step size. It means that if we set the step size as four and current PE number is 64, the action space will be from 60 to 68. So now let's look at how algorithm work. You will have the first state solution and you'll input into the second stage. So you will first go through a genetic encoding. So what it does is that it just serializes those P buffer assignment into a series of numbers. And we will call gene here. We make multiple copies of those gene and forms a population and goes into our genetic operator. Genetic operator includes mutation and crossover. For mutation, we will randomly select some of the value and perturb their value by the step size. And you will have your mutated gene. And then you will go to the crossover block. In crossover, you will randomly swap some of the values then you will have your crossover genes. Then we'll go to evaluation, select some good one, and go to the next generation. Then when the algorithm converge, you will have a fine-tuned solution. Now let's see how could we run Confucius. First we set up. So you need to clone this repository and then create a virtual environment if you want. And then you just install the requirement dependency. And you can run Confucius auto optimization and other IO method with these three scripts. In the Confucius code base, you will see this directory structure. You have a soft link to Mastro here, and some supported data flow strategy here, and the supported model here. And the result directory will be this output directory. And in the source directory, there are three methods Confucius, other optimization, and other reinforcement learning. Here is a data flow strategy that you will see. As we say, the buffer size is coupled with the tile size that you use. So we change the buffer size by changing the tile sizes. And here we change the K tile sizes. But if you want to explore more options, it is not required to change by the K dimension. You can change other dimension too. Here are some user options for the input argument. We categorize them into objective, constraint, and hyperparameter. For the fitness, it includes latency and energy. And for the data flow and model, you can choose from the data flow and model that we supported in the corresponding directory. Constraint is a resource constraint. It will be area of power. And multiplier is the resource constraint multiplier. It means that when the data flow and model is fixed and the action space is defined, actually you can calculate the maximum power and maximum area you could have. It means that if we don't consider any constraint, then you can actually make, always make the largest action, like largest P and largest buffer. Then you will end up at the maximum power, maximum area that it possibly get. So our constraint will be posed like this. The system under design is only allowed to use multiplier multiplied by the power max or multiplier multiplied by the area max. And then you will have hyperparameter like epoch and algorithm you choose. And also there are some hyperparameters like learning rate, discount ratio, mutation ratio that can be set at the code base. Now let's have some demo. First, let's start with our repo directory. So you will go to Confucius and you can see in the data, you can see the data flow file that we supported and the model we supported here. And then we'll run Confucius with this script. So in this script, we set the fitness as latency and constraint as area and the constraint multiplied as 0.5 and run 500 epoch. And the data flow with the best file is Shige now. And then the algorithm is uh, RL plus GA, so it's Confucius. So the Shige now data flow file look like this. It parallelizes across Y and X dimension. And the model we are running is an example file. So it is this. It is a two-layer uh, DNA model. So now let's run Confucius.
here we got our result. We will pass out a uh, latency to episode converge curves. So you can see that it converging. And then you can see the result here. So the final phase we achieve is this 4.9, 10 to the 6. And we have two layers of DNN. So we will give this two layers of hardware resource assignment. So it's 64 PE and a unit of buffer for the first layer. And the use constraint is this. So you can see that we use like 94.7% of the constraint. Now let's go to our output directory. So in Confucius output directory, you could see this result directory pop out. And this is the image that you just see. And this is the uh, output log file. So we'll log the reward here and the uh, resource assignment here and the use constraint here. And now let's also run out the optimization. And we use random. And here we have the result. So we also pop out this image and the final solution and the final fitness. And then now let's run other reinforcement learning. So it's the A to C algorithm. So now let's run other reinforcement learning. Here we have the result. So also the latency converge curve and the final assignment and final fitness. Now let's look at our output directory. So here in the output directory, you can see three results that are here. So it's A to C, random, and Confucius. For A to C, you can see that it achieved 5.0, 10 to the 6. And for random, you can see it achieved 5.0, 10 to the 6. And for Confucius, you can see it achieved 4.9, 10 to the 6. So Confucius performed better in this simple example. And also here the optimization process is set to map the entire model onto the accelerator. So we are mapping all the DNA layer on the accelerator and assuming that it runs in a pipeline manner. But we can also map the layer of DNA model one at a time onto the accelerator. And then the underlying assumption becomes we run it se uh, sequentially. So how do we do it? Take the example DNA layer, for example. The example DNA layer had two layers. Then when we want to do it like sequentially mapping onto the accelerator, we just separate them into two files. So the first file has the first layer, the second file has the second layer. Then we are mapping one layer to the accelerator at a time. Following, we are going to discuss some configuration you can make and how to tune some hyperparameter. Now let's look at action space. We have a default action space, which has 12 different actions. But you can also define your own action space here just by putting the first row as the choice of number of PE, the second row is as the choice of number of buffer sizes. For some advanced users, you can also do some confusion specific tuning. Like in our algorithm here, you can tune the learning rate, the discount ratio, and the clipping range. And in the GA algorithm, you can tune the number of generation and number of population. And also you can tune the mutation rate. And you can also add your own optimization algorithm in the main file of the auto optimization, you can add your algorithm here as another method. And for the code skeleton of your optimization algorithm, we'll suggest you look at the random search function and you just need to change this to line to your optimizer. So the first line is suggesting number of P, the second line is suggesting number of buffer, and it should be suggested by your optimizer. And after the optimizer suggests the P and buffer, we'll output the hardware performance for you. Here are some available resources. For more detail, please refer to the paper and the code is available online.